Africa is a continent rich with opportunity. And when business and communities come together, its astonishing potential begins to be felt. With the Sustainable Development Goals steering these partnerships, Africa's future is being rewritten with innovation, foresight and inclusivity. Crossing the length and breadth of the continent, our journalists uncover these stories and share them with the world. Join us now for remarkable stories of partnerships across Africa. Building the future and changing lives. It's Africa's time. Farming is the lifeblood of Tanzania. More than two-thirds of its population live off the land, relying on their yields to provide for their families. But things are not what they could be, and many challenges remain. I'm visiting the country's Morogoro rice-producing region to meet local farmers and agri-experts to find out firsthand what can be done to unlock the vast potential of land and life in this magnificent country. Peter Assi is a local agronomist working with farmers to improve practices, preserve the environment and help transform lives. So this rice is grown here? Yes, this rice is grown here because most of the villagers here, they are growing rice. About 90% of the people living in Morogoro are farmers. Yeah, so most of their, their income depends on the agricultural sector. Common crops grown is rice, and most of the area they grow rice by irrigation. And also we have maize, sweet potatoes, sugar cane. These are the major crops. This is a very huge plate of food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so are we also going to eat it with our hands then? Yes. Make a little bowl, yeah. get some vegetables, vegetables. in there. Mmm. It's good. Yeah. Mm. I was born in the farm in Moshi, Kilimanjaro region, where we grow a lot of coffee. We are farmers. And from there, I said it will be better if I go for agricultural training so that I can help my villagers and my country in the, as a whole to improve their production. After qualifying as a horticulturalist, Peter joined Yara one of the world's largest producers of mineral fertilizers. His grassroots engagement with farmers forms part of a bigger initiative to minimize rural poverty and transform agriculture. Peter works with small-scale and commercial growers like Onesmo Ishumi. The land is the mother of human beings. That's where we get everything. That's why I love it. Actually, we Tanzania some years back, we didn't see the value of land because it was printed, you can clear the bush today and you use it for two years. If it is depleted, it moves to another place. So there was deforestation. But now, because of investors, a lot of land has been taken. So farmers now, they are putting more value on the land to maintain it and to see to it that it keeps on giving them the harvest as they used to have. At what stage is the rice crop at the moment? The stage of, the, of my crop is in about three weeks now. With less land available, yields need to intensify. If they don't, Tanzania will need to clear 9 million hectares for maize alone to feed its growing population. The Climate Smart response is to maximize yields responsibly using modern farming techniques. Nowadays, because the demand of fertilizer in Tanzania has been so great, some of the companies, they are coming just to sell, but they are not investing into training. But Yara has done quite a tremendous work as far as training is concerned. They put up a demonstration plot so that the farmers can see and learn by doing. But I'm sure the people in this area have been farming for many years, so how are they taking to these new forms of farming? Because of the production, the, the yield was very low. Previous day we have less than five bags, but since we came in and after going through the trainings, they are now going up to 30 to 40 bags per acre. Farming has contributed substantially to the livelihood of my family. 
most of the farmers they are having problems of acquiring inputs. That's why we established a small shop for selling agricultural inputs. And actually my wife, she's staying in town and she's running that shop. While stores like the Ishumis are important, larger scale investments in agri-infrastructure are essential. Yaro's establishment of a fertilizer terminal at Dar es Salaam port is one example, making sure of a steady supply of fertilizer to farmers and helping the entire sector grow. As part of really promoting public-private partnership in agriculture, the private sector took an initiative in collaboration with the government to come up with the, what they call Southern Agriculture Growth Corridor of Tanzania, SAGOT. And this, this initiative mainly is really to focus on investments in agriculture and how to bring the smallholder farmers into the value chain. It's a win-win situation. The farmers will increase their production. The uh, companies will sell more of their products to the farmers. The government will be assured of food security in the country. And the farmers will have more money to spend. But still more had to be done and a unique partnership between the private sector, academia, and the farmers themselves was formed. Yara, Syngenta, Tanzania Sokoina University of Agriculture, and the Norwegian University of Life Sciences launched the Environment and Climate Compatible Agriculture Project to test and prove that intensification of farming can occur alongside environmental sustainability. The aim of this environment and climate compatible agriculture project was to apply good agricultural practice in an environment where the agricultural productivity is generally still very low. Using state-of-the-art science and also inputs, fertilizers for instance, and to compare the impact the farmer's practice have on the environment versus our improved practice. If you intensify productivity, do we affect the environment? Our results show that it is possible to increase the yield from the same area that we are cultivating now up to even 2050, instead of expanding the area cultivated and therefore saving the forests, saving the, the water sources, and therefore improving the, our environment. Soil scientist Ivam Tengeti was part of the ECCAG team working to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, improve biodiversity, and ensure the longevity of the land. This soil has got very good physical properties, but actually this soil has low chemical fertility. So in order to produce good crop, you need it to fertilizer. But that cannot be told by just looking at the soil. We have to sample the soil, taking them to the laboratory for analysis. Then we decided which fertilizer to be used and at what rate. How did you go about transmitting the knowledge that you'd found here from your research to the farmers? Farmers are not ignorant. They know quite a lot about soil. They noticed that they have problem, but they didn't know how to correct the problem because they have been used fertilizer, but they were wrong. So after soil analysis, we came up with the correct correction. Really, in farmers, they want things which they can see. So after seeing what the other has improved, then the farmer copied and he asked the question. And then we had a chance to introduce the best practices. Maize farmer Frederick Kaduma worked with ECCAG researchers and agronomists and has increased his production significantly. <laughs> With nine demonstration plots in two regions, the mindset of farmers is changing harvest by harvest. Scaling the ECCAG project across Tanzania and Africa is an exciting and logical next step. We go to the village and we introduce ourselves to the community and telling them what our plan is for the better life. Sometimes we get resistance. We will just find few farmers in that area who are willing to cooperate with us in the new technology. Mr. Upole was among the farmers who accepted our new technology. So we selected his farm to be used as a demonstration plot. So Mr. Upole started to follow up what we are doing and he also practiced on his farm 
and eventually other farmers also joined Mr. Opole in the acceptance of the technology. And you can see there, that one is our lead farmer. Okay. Upole, Njo. Habari. I'm coming in. So, I'll hold your hand. <laughs> okay. So, what are we going to be doing? I don't want to kill any of these uh, rice plants. This is a weed as well? Yes. It it's looks like a well. beautiful. Mr. Upole is a lot quicker than I am. I think I'm really good at throwing it out. Yeah. <laughs> these are the seedlings they are going for transplanting. You can see the straight lines with good spacing from one plant to another. So this is the way we are teaching the farmers to plant like this one, rather than broadcasting directly to the field in order to get more yield. Now, I have a lot of people who are living in the world. I have a lot of people who are living in the world. I have a lot of people who are living in the world. I have a lot of people who are na napata kipato cha chakula ndani kwangu na kingine ni kubadilisha mazingira ya nyumba yangu kama unavyoiona kama unavyoona mafundi wanaendelea kufanya kazi lakini kutokana na kipato kuongezeka hao wazazi wangu wote walikuwa ni wakulima alizi ni rasilimali kwetu sisi kwa maana Tanzania haina yoyote na kuitunza ni kuiangalia katika mazingira isialibiwe kwa hiyo tunasema kwamba alizi ni rasilimali Familia na ata kwa taifa.